Yeah. What up, though? OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny at Retired from the Streets TV. While y'all at it, don't forget to hit that subscribe button right now. And as y'all get to watching the video, if you like it, hit that like button and share the content. Don't be afraid. It's free. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so this past March, right, middle of March, I want to say March 13th, 14th, 15th, right before my daughter's birthday, right? I, I saw the story then, but I was so caught up in her birthday activities and festivities that I kind it kind of slipped my mind. So I took a screenshot of it and said, I'm going to come back and cover this because I wasn't really familiar with the story or the details. And I wanted to give y'all everything that came with the story, right? <clears throat> so 34-year-old Tori Anderson was convicted and took a um, deal of 15 years in federal prison for sex trafficking, right? Um, sex trafficking a minor, 17 year old girl who had his name tattooed, his name Tori tattooed on her forehead and on the side of her face, either side of her face. I don't, uh, I don't think they got specific as to the side, but y'all get the picture. A minor, don't say her ethnicity or whatnot, but just say she was 17 years old and this dude was pimping her out from in, in Michigan and other locations. And this is according to, um, U.S. Attorney Dawn N. Eisen. She said that the dude knew she was 17 years old. He was setting up dates for her. He would bring her condoms and food, and he was the one monitoring the traffic and making sure she was straight. Basically a pimp, right? Now, let's take you back to how he even got to this point of getting convicted and, and um, having to plea out to this charge of sex trafficking. His original charges were sex trafficking and possession and receiving child pornography because the girl was 17 years old and apparently she had been sending him um, news of herself, I guess, so he can use them to attract dates and whatnot for the sick dudes who like underage girls. And there's a lot of them out here. It's a lot of dudes who really into the fetish side and the sick side of dealing with underage people women when it comes to sex and especially when it comes to sex trafficking right so <clears throat> september the 3rd 2019 at a hotel in roseville right this dude gets arrested trying to leave or flee the scene of a sting operation that was set up by the local authorities and semtec which is the southeastern michigan trafficking and exploitation crimes task force right they the ones who cover, who partner up with the local um, jurisdictions and local law enforcement agencies and say, we're going to track down these sex traffickers, set up sting operations, and we're going to bust them, right? So what they did was they had a couple of agents who had already had got two out of three of his girls. Now, he had three girls all together who had initially he was um, accused of branding and having his name tattooed on either their foreheads or their faces, T-O-R-Y, Tory, right? So the two older females had got with some agents at a hotel out in Redford. They sit down and they talking about the details of how they do their thing and what he do to them and how he set up his operation. And that's when the members of some members of Semtech learned about the, the, the underage girl, the 17 year old that we talking about, right? So what they did was say, okay, cool. We're going to set up a date with this um, dude, this dude with the 17 year old with an undercover agent. And they did so at this hotel in Redford, right? I mean, Roseville. So what ended up happening was they set the date up, right? Um, he discussing his the information with his undercover agent, giving um, the agent her information and saying this is what she had. This is how she land. Whoop, whoop. So. When they when the when the minor gets to the room, because they want to make it official, right? When the minor finally get to the hotel room, that's when boom, the agents descend upon the room. He tried to flee the scene. He tries to get the hell on. So he hop out, hop in the whip, scare, bop. 
hit a government car. He hit the government car. They run up on him. Dog, what's your name? He tell him his name, Tory Anderson. Right? That's when they cuff him and they take him in. And they book him on charges. On top of all this, you own the dude on parole already for armed robbery charges, right? So you on parole. Then in the midst of all this, you decide pimping was a good idea. Now, like I always say, man, I don't have no mercy. I don't have no sympathy for dudes or people in period who victimize children and vulnerable people. Women, children, or the elderly, people who suffer from some type of debilitating um, mental issue or emotional, they're emotionally um, incapacitated, right? I don't have no sympathy for these type of dudes because I spent too much time around them. I did too much counseling with them and therapy with them. And some of these dudes just don't want to change. Some of these dudes will never change. It's so it's so embedded in them. That's why I say it sometimes seems a little what you call that hypocritical about what I say, because I'm a, I'm a firm believer in redemption. I'm a firm believer that people, some people have the power to redeem themselves no matter what crime they committed. But certain people, certain people will never change their ways. And it's crazy because uh, you have a lot of people who are repeat sex offenders, especially when it comes to minors. It's like some years go by, they feel like they got it out their system or they fought the urge as long as they could and then boom, something happens, something trigger them. A little girl walking past eating a certain candy that they smell it and it's a trigger. Certain smell, a certain sound, a, a damn ice cream truck ride past and it triggers something in them. So I'm never ever sympathetic with dudes who victimize children, who victimize minors. You understand what I'm saying? Who victimize women and vulnerable people in general, right? My thing is, like, it makes it, it's, it makes it hard for dudes who sincerely on parole and trying to do they, the right thing, right? When you got a dude who on parole and who really just don't give a damn about what he's doing, not only are you, it ain't like you found some women who was willing to do their thing, who was of age, who said, hey, I'm out here doing my thing. I just want somebody to kind of guide my path. I just want somebody to protect me. I need a male presence around and I'm going to pay you for it. That's a whole different thing, especially if you go to Vegas or somewhere where it's, it's legal, right? But you're taking young girls and then women in general and you branding them, bro. You're getting them tatted up. What the fuck? What, is that? what the hell is on your mind? So you you fetishizing. You sick in your own way. It ain't like you just trying to get to the money. You want to be known. You understand what I'm saying? This ain't an opportunity like a businessman and you ain't doing this sophisticated. You got three women, two older, one underage, and you branding them and pimping them out and probably getting peanuts. Why are you on parole? Instead of taking your, your dumb self in that time you did, right? Learning something, applying some principles. Now, I don't want to hear nothing about how they don't have classes in prison no more. They don't have college in prisons no more because I see too many dudes who locked up and spend bread on garbage, coffee, cookups, noodles, getting high and won't order a magazine subscription. And I educated myself to a lot of business practices, infrastructure, how to scale business vertically and otherwise and how to take and make a funnel work for you. Right. And things that I'm applying now as I'm building this podcast and I've learned the, the basics of a lot of that stuff in prison through magazines like Fast Company and otherwise. So when I see a dude on parole who jack and wreck, who making it hard for dudes who, who, and jack and wreck basically means that the recreation, the best part of things has been compromised and you messed it up because you're doing stupid stuff. You get out here on parole, you make it look bad for dudes who come home with a game plan. And you really didn't have no game plan, bro. You came home and you got on some garbage. So them 15 years got to sit with you now. And that's why I love this platform, Retired from the Streets, because it ain't just the streets that we're talking about. We're talking about a mentality that we're trying to get people to retire from. And I tell these stories so that dudes, like, I don't know this dude, but I see the story and it's out there. And there was really no follow up behind it because they had said, OK, this dude got accused. But I just seen it popped up, like I said, a few months ago. So I said, I'm going to cover it. My thing is, when you're doing things that you know dumb as hell and it's consequences what my man um trey king say you play a stupid game you win a stupid prize right i love that saying shout out to trey king and his show man 
you play a stupid game, you win a stupid prize. And I like that because you basically jack wreck. You made it look bad for dudes who, who coming home because everybody who come home on parole and, and mess up and go back not only adds to the recidivism rate, you justify why they can have harsher sentencing, why they can have stricter guidelines when it comes to parole, eligibility, and whatnot. You make it harder for dudes who coming home with their mind right. So no sympathy for dudes like you, man. Do you live 15, hope it bites you in the ass real hard. You understand what I'm saying? Because I don't agree with none of that type of... If you're going to get to the bag, get to the bag, bro. But do it the right way. Get you some women who have aged, if that's what you want to do, and it's legal, and do it in the way it's legal at. And make sure it's done the right way. You're branding women, and you're trying to get real a pimp. And you obviously ain't have your hand tight, because your oldest two, <laughs> who should have been your bottom ones, they ratted you out and set you up. You understand what I'm saying? Anywho, man. I had to get that story out to y'all, man. Y'all get in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about the story. Or if y'all know anything more about the story. Or if y'all know firsthand somebody who's been a victim of sex trafficking. Or somebody that you know who's been convicted of something that you think is just erroneous and wrong-ass crime. You know, if it's heinous, sexual, and whatnot, get in the comment section, man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, man. I love y'all. OG Kenny at Retire from the Streets TV. O underscore G underscore Kenny. I love y'all and I'm going to see y'all later. Nigga. Ha.